yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Craig Shirley, author most recently of December 1941, 31 Days That Changed America and Saved the World. Craig, thanks for talking to us. You bet, Nick. Thank you. Set the table for America before Pearl Harbor. We were at peace, but it was an uneasy peace. Um, nobody wanted to get involved in the European war. Right. Gallup had done polling that something on the order of 70% of the American people were opposed to our entry in the European war. We weren't even thinking about and this, war And the draft Japan. had already, I mean, there were... One vote in October 1941, the House of Representatives, had, uh, by one vote, uh, kept the draft in place. That's right. And uh, people had been called up, but nobody, nobody wanted to go to war. No, uh, no. The only way you could go to war, if you were an American, was to, uh, the, the, the uh, Chinese Air Force was taking American uh, flyers. So you had to resign your commission and then re-enlist in the Chinese Air Force to fight uh, the Empire of Japan. Uh, did anybody do that? No, yeah, there were a number of uh, officers who did that, sure. Okay, so then uh, we have the Pearl Harbor attack and everything changes. Uh, and a, a large part of your book is about how America went from being non-interventionist or resolutely isolationist right. even right. to something else. Um, talk about the vote uh, that was taken after uh, uh, FDR's uh, famous uh, speech. Uh, it goes very quickly in the House and the Senate on December 8th. Um, it was unanimous in the Senate and one vote in the House, yeah, Jeanette talk, Rankin. Yeah, yeah sure. talk about Jeanette Rankin and I think she's a FDR very interesting Republican. person. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's, she was uh, from Montana. Yeah, she, she, yeah. she was uh, very interesting, and, uh, and, and I think that it, was, it took a lot of courage for her. She, her. she had very principled reason. She said, I cannot ask somebody to go fight in a war that I can't fight in myself. Now, she'd also been in Congress in 1917 and had voted then against entry into the European war, but she was joined by about 50 members of Congress then, so she wasn't alone. But this time, she was all alone. She'd, after the vote in 1917, she was driven out, essentially driven out of Congress and had been out in the political wilderness for 20 years and then came back and was elected again in Montana uh, in 1940. And then, of course, after 42, she didn't even bother to seek re-election because she knew she wouldn't win. How much was the anti-war sentiment in America born out of the uh, experience in World War I? But it, was, it was, it was all. a useless war. Well, or a European, truly we had, a European We had war. historical admonitions. George Washington advised against entangling alliances um, uh, in his farewell address. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine uh, essentially codified it and said to Europe, you know, you stay out of our affairs and we'll essentially stay out of your affairs. Um, we were briefly internationalist uh, in the Spanish-American War, but then we were retrenched very quickly. We were briefly internationalist in World War I, but then we really retreated very quickly. The World War I left a horrible taste in American people's mouths. There was a saying going around America after World War I, all we got out of this was death and debt and George M. Cohen. And by 1940, FDR is running for his third term and is telling, and in October of 1940, he's telling American mothers, I will not send your sons to die in, in, in another European war because he's feeling the political pressure. The America First movement is a very respectable political uh, movement in America in, in December, on December 6, 1941. It was not only led by Lindbergh, but also involved were E.E. E. Cummings, Walt Disney, Lowell Thomas, Al Smith. There were a lot of respectable individuals on the left and the right who were involved with the America First movement. They were so strong, they'd actually announced plans to open up campaign offices in all the congressional districts for the 42 elections to support the most isolationist candidate, whether it was Republican or Democrat. They were at one issue. Okay, so then, you know, December 7th comes, 2,400 right. Americans are killed at, right. the, at Pearl Harbor. Right. That's gone. How did America react to, uh, to Pearl Harbor? Instantly, with anger, with rage, with a sense of revenge, uh, a sense, uh, obviously a sense of loss, mourning. Now, uh, talk about after Pearl Harbor, one of the things you mentioned in the book is that some people thought it was possible to go to war against Japan, but not Germany. Sure. That, that, was, yeah. that was a non-start. So we, we were attacked on the 7th. We declared war on the 8th. Not until the 11th do Germany and Italy declare war on the United States. And it's interesting, I detected nothing in this country. There's no outcry between the 7th and the 11th for America to go to war with, with Germany and Italy as we, we def, yeah. definitely wanted to go to war with Japan. 
As a matter of fact, in go we were going through Henry Stimson's papers, who was, of course, the Secretary of War under Roosevelt. In his papers, we found a typewritten draft from the evening of December 7th of a declaration of war against Japan and Germany and Italy. But obviously, it was junked, and probably for political considerations as much as anything, because there was a strong uh, uh, German uh, po population in the, in the United States, especially on the East Coast. There was a strong Italian population and, and support, uh, 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 especially on the East Coast. So that was junked, and we only declared war on Japan. So it's only after Germany and Italy declare war on us that we respond in kind. How do you compare Pearl Harbor to 9-11? The, the country stayed unified for much longer after December 7th than it did after September 11th. There was also headlong stumbles into gross violations of civil liberties in this country after December 7th as there was after December 11th. Uh, Japanese Americans, German Americans, Italian Americans, uh, the, the uh, Roosevelt government took over all the commercial radio stations in America and dictated, dictated uh, programming requirements. There was a woman in uh, Kansas uh, who was sentenced to two years in prison because her son, her two sons in public school, didn't uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, in Chicago, a man was fined $200 at a movie theater because when Roosevelt's image came up on the screen, he said something, he yelled something. Yeah. But so anyway, wow. so there was a lot of uh, uh, trampling of constitutional rights and civil rights uh, in the yeah. days after right. December 7th, as there were after uh, September um, 11th. You, you talk about in the book how uh, December this month, December 1941, was the hinge point uh, when America went from being kind of an isolationist or non uh, right. an uh, isolationist, not just simply in foreign policy, but it, it emerged onto the world stage. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, is, it, it, as an example, after uh, World War I, it, we reject the League of Nations. After World War II, we embraced the United Nations, and I'm not making a moral judgment yeah. about it, it's just simply a historical fact. Talk about your uh, next project. You've got another book coming out in yeah. rapid succession. What is that about? Uh, this is uh, titled is Citizen Newt. Uh, I've been working on it for the last two years. It's a political biography of Newt Gingrich, but it's mostly on his uh, early life. It's from uh, 1973 to 1994, and it culminates with the Republican, or the Republican takeover of Congress in 1994. So I've been spending a lot of hours with Gingrich interviewing him and talking about that time, but also talking about the current state of of affairs and play and with that'll his be, campaigns. And that'll be coming out from Thomas Nelson in the spring? Yes, yeah, in the spring. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you, uh, Craig Shirley. Uh, I'm Nick Gillespie for Reason TV, and today we've been talking with Craig Shirley, author most recently of December 1941, 31 Days That Changed America and Saved the World. Thank, thank you, Nick. You.